All right, welcome back to the channel. No need for this guy today because this is already out of the box. However, it's not out of this box yet. This still uh, is a new in-box knife. And uh, I just realized, you know, one of the things I've noticed in some other channels is that people express themselves a little bit with some of their unique knives and i've been starting on a little bit of a path to vary some of what i have here for comparison so for instance i think this is it <clears throat> you've been seeing uh, a pair of three that looks like this which is a great great knife i'm actually going to do a review on it because i've gotten to spend a little more time with it lately um even though i can't seem to deploy it all of a sudden uh while on camera Probably did it a hundred times in a row today and then just missed it twice for you. <laughs> well, that's how it goes sometimes. So anyways, had that plain Jane. Saw the DLT trading exclusive tan. So this is S45VN. Tan. I think it's DLC coded. I can't actually remember, but I think it's DLC coded. Maybe it says on here. Actually, I don't have the box right here. Where's the box? Um... It just says black, um, but anyways, 20 CV. So, um, you know, different strokes for different folks. I think both of these blade steels are pretty, pretty equal in a lot of ways, but got that going. And once I got that going, I was like, you know what? I have the right knife for my bug out because I've been using this bug out as like my go-to. And I'm going to take you off, uh, I don't know what we call it. Uh, what's the right term? We're going to go behind the scenes real quickly here, something I haven't done before. And I'm going to take you over, get unplugged. And this is where I have my knives that I do for comparisons. This is where that bug out lives. And we're going to be swapping that one out today, too. So let's get this pair of three back over here also. This is where the pair of three lives. So that's now an updated one, a little expression there of me. I, these are the different Demcos I keep like right handy here. And then right here off the desk, there's my foot. Um, you'll see I have the uh, nice little Craftsman toolbox that has maybe half of the nicer knives. And let's get that opened up. So you can see some Demcos, some Hinderers, and <laughs> there's the 8020S drawer. It's pretty crazy. And anyway, let's bring it back up here. And let's jump back into position and let's get into this bug out because this is one that i've been wanting like i've been feeling like this is a really cool variation and i'll talk about why so before this knife was 144 dollars maybe you could get you know a little discount code on some websites or whatever and get it down a little bit but the driver although i don't mind the feel of it you know there's some complaints about how strong it is and it's definitely pretty weak in that sense you wouldn't want to make like real strong like be driving that through a lot of stuff it's it is comfortable in hand to me it's not like super comfortable but it's you know very um neutral and so it's pretty darn comfortable um however s30v blade steel 144 dollars, and it just jumped to 162. Mm starting to feel like uh maybe not the well first of all it's not the best value we already know that it was one it was not a good value at 144 um it's a really bad value at 162 um especially for s30v that's just uh you know kind of unacceptable to me so um this variant is Blade HQ. Now, this isn't, I'm going to say, a much better value because the price goes up. It's a 199.75 down from MSRP of 235 on their website right now. But this variant, and particularly this one with the satin finish, has 20 CV and it has um, uh, G10 handles. And so let's go ahead and get this opened up here. And get it out of the box. Sorry that that's taking almost five minutes to get the darn knife out of the box here. But you never know what might happen on this channel. I might just go off on some tangent like I just did about my work area. Um, first thing I noticed, oh, 
looking at it backwards. The hardware is different color, uh, which is pretty cool. So um, I'd actually, you know, generally prefer the black. I actually think this knife is kind of cool as it is. Like the little blue thun stud flare gives it just a little extra enough that I actually think it's a pretty cool knife. Let me uh, get this stuff over here. But, you know, everyone has their blue bug out or a CF Elite or whatever. This is a G10 handle. Let's see if I can get some good lighting on it. I'm not getting great lighting there. The texturing goes um, handle wide, which is kind of cool. Um, generally the same aside from that. I can feel in hand it's just a touch heavier. But most importantly, oh, this one's super fresh out of box, so... Let me wheel it with my good hand and take my easy one with my left hand here. If I can do it. I don't know. I can actually, anyways. Um, so that's where, you know, a huge difference, a huge step up, I think, from S30V to 20CV. You're talking about like a super premium steel here versus, um, you know, a, a, a premium steel, but like definitely what was, it's becoming a little out of date. It's becoming a little dated, the S30V. It's it's a good steel for most people. It's more than you'd ever need. But getting the G10 handles, getting the kind of unique coloring and stuff here, getting into the 20CV, and um, yeah, just kind of mixing it up a little. This is a pretty cool option to me. To me, this is kind of what the bug out feels like it should be. You know, this one is definitely uh, going to need some work to get it to a fidgety state. I think that's what I remember. All the bug outs I've gotten have been a little sticky out of the package like that. Um, so it'll probably take a little working in to become, you know, drop shut. Like, I don't know if this one's even drop shut, is it? Let me see. Oh yeah, that's, that's drop shut. But this one was not when I first got it. Although that's drop shut with the axis lock open, I should say. So this one axis lock open yeah it's not not dropping so but i think that's how this one was as well this little bug out mini that i have gosh i hope this doesn't lead me to having to buy another bug out mini uh the addiction is real folks um but anyways um bug out original bug out mini Blade HQ exclusive, G10, 20 CV. That's a sweetie. That's real sweetie. I'm curious if we're seeing anything different on the edge. Let's see if I can get a nice little focus there. So we can get some eyes on the edge and just see if there's anything different. They're kind of known for making a bit of a toothy edge at Benchmade. It doesn't typically come out of the box feeling like glass. This one actually feels like it might be a little smoother than usual. That'd be kind of nice if so. Yeah, these are both like really toothy. Like they feel like they've been used. And I ha they have been used, but like not much. Not enough to feel how they do. So that's an exciting one. I'm, I'm really excited to have this one. Um, and excited to finally get it out of the box. I've actually had it for a while. Um, but uh, that will now be my... My go-to bug out comparison variant, which uh, I've seen a lot of people use titanium versions, carbon fiber versions, you know, they have so many variants of the bug out. Um, there's a lot of ways you could go with it. Um, but that one to me was kind of like when I saw this and they, they were very hard to get for a while. Right now they're in stock, so I'll link to the web page if you want to grab one. It's again, not what I'd call like a bargain deal or anything like that. But, um, you know, if you're looking for fixing a couple of the issues in the bug out and uh, getting a little bit of flair, that certainly got it. I think the handles feel like a little better too in hand. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Um, why that is. So they must have knocked down the sides a little more or something. I don't know. It's not a huge difference, but there's definitely some like difference in the chamfering there. And it does feel like a little better. Um, can't quite figure out what it is. Oh yeah. So this is chamfered on the inside of the scale. 
Whereas this one's really sharp on the inside of the scale. So that's interesting. I didn't even know that that would be a difference there. I guess it kind of makes sense at the same time. See if I can, I'm trying to see if I can change up the lighting here and get you a good view of that. You can probably see now how sharp that is. You can feel that a little bit in hand. It's not a huge deal, but over here you got a really nice chamfering. That's a really nice, uh, really nice handle. Yeah, both sides too. That makes me like this even more. Now, I'll be honest, taste preference, I'd probably go personally with the blue thumb stud on this one versus the green. But again, I like, you know, when a company throws a little flair, goes a little freestyle, and kind of puts their foot, I don't, I don't know what the right term is exactly, but, you know, says, hey, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to do a little different. And I feel like this kind of falls into that category, which is cool. So good for you, Blade HQ. I agree that this is a better version of the bug out. Um, really, to me, the best one that's out. I mean, there's like, you go to the CF Elite, you're still stuck with S30V blade steel, but you get the better handles. You go to the, I can't remember the name of the carbon one, but the carbon fiber one's like S90V, which is not the right blade steel for a lot of people. Uh, you know, it's, it's a good one for like a light use daily knife because you'll very rarely have to, but it's a little chippy, but you'll very rarely have to sharpen it. Just amazing edge retention, but the toughness isn't really there. Um, you go to the, um, you know, they have like the titanium version. I don't remember what blade steel that is. I'd have to go double check what the, uh, I don't know if it's aluminum, maybe it's aluminum from the factory, but they either have an aluminum or titanium scale version. And I can't remember what, uh, blade steel that one is. I'd have to double check, but, um, yeah, this one felt like dollar for dollar the best one like I don't really when I get a bug out want necessarily like titanium scales that's not really the point to me it's to me this is a very utility like EDC as light as possible knife um in fact just today I was not carrying my Demco 8020.5 because I had like too much stuff going on in my pockets I'm like you know what? I'm gonna throw that in my pocket um I think I ended up just forcing myself to throw the 8020.5 in my pocket but um that did occur to me today where again i'm pretty like big on having you know the maximum pocket feel so that was 1.86 this guy's 1.51 ounces i'm gonna guess this is probably north of the two ounce like that it's already starting to become pretty fidgety there that was what i was thinking <laughs> They uh they do open up once you get to work on them. I'm gonna guess 2.1, 2.1 ounces. 2.17. So it's definitely significantly heavier, right? It's 10% heavier. 10 almost 20% heavier. I'm gonna call it 15 to 20% heavier than the standard one. Um for the super weight weenie. Um if you're gonna be using this while um, you know biking at Tour de France, this may not be the right one for you if you're going to use this while doing a hike up, um, up, uh, oh, uh, you know, some massive mountain, uh, you're going to go do Everest or something like that. You're going to sub it at Everest. You might want to, you know, save the extra couple ounces and go with the mini or the, the, uh, standard bug out here. But for, I'd say the majority of folks, like, a third of an ounce, a quarter of an ounce, whatever that difference was, a quarter of an ounce about. That's not something you're, that's a discernible difference. And um, yeah, I mean, that makes this thing a very strong argument. I wish they had actually like, I, I kind of like the variety, but I wish that this was the black on the hardware and on the, um, now you can get this in a black blade. I don't know what the coating is that Benchmade uses. I think it's is it Cerakote or DLC, whatever it is. I can't remember which one they, they use, but you can get the, the black blade in the black, I think it's the black pocket clip. I'd have to go double check if they put the same pocket clip on both. Um, but yeah, I think this one would look really good, kind of contrasty with the black, with the white G10 with the black hardware. That'd probably look really nice. This looks really cool. I mean, it's different, that's why I wanted it. But my my personal design preferences would probably send me in that direction. So let's see 
we can now access lock this thing out. It's still not quite as loose as my other one, but pretty darn good. Lockup is not perfect as per usual on my Benchmades. I have found every single one of them has like a little bit of blade play. And I don't know if I'm the only one, but every one of them gives me a tiny little click. It's not like quite the feeling of being loose. It's almost like the whole thing's moving together. Like almost like it's supposed to be that way. But I've never had super strong lockup. By contrast, the Demco 8020.5, granted, you know, double the weight of this knife. There is zero, like it feels almost like a fixed blade in your hand, you know, as long as you've got it together right. And, uh, you know, I think in many ways a superior knife, um, but in many ways these are superior because they're super, you know, light and uh, that makes them unique. So, um, yeah, really excited to have this one. Um, you know, 20 CV, amazing. It's, if you're not familiar, it's the same thing as M390 or 204P. It is, um, it is, um, gosh, name just slipped my mind. CPM 20 CV is, um, well, Bowler did M390. And, you know, of course, now I'm slipping my mind on S30. They come in and did S30V, um, uh, S35 VN, S45 S90V, all that is the same company and the name's just slipping my mind all of a sudden, but it's almost 10 p.m. and we had a long day today um, as a family, <laughs> day before Thanksgiving. So, um, yeah, uh, very, very cool knife, very cool variant. Really pleased with that chamfering. I think that does really make a difference. Oh, let's take a look inside. One last thing before we go. Um, Ah, look at that. That's that's really interesting. So they didn't do any, um, if I'm seeing it right, no milling or, you know, no webbing or whatever. That is really just a little piece of slab G10 in there. Let's just see if we can grab a flashlight and double check. Yeah, absolutely. That is a, and it's probably blinding the video, so you can't see it now, um, but it's working really well for me. Um, maybe I can pull the flashlight back. There you go. So you can see um, no milling out of there, which explains why it's much stronger. Um, by comparison, you can see the inside of the uh, standard bug out is, I don't know if you call it milling, you wouldn't call it milling, it's the wrong term, but um, you know, it's molded to be hollow, like it's hollowed out, I guess would be the right term for it. Um, let's see if I can, oh, there we go. That's probably the best flashlight view. You're probably being blinded right now, but um, there you go. So that's a pretty big difference from um, this, where you're getting just a slab of G10. And uh, that is pretty cool. It definitely explains the weight difference, but it also explains the strength difference um, of this variant. So that is a very considerable all around great knife. I always say like the drop point is probably my favorite all around blade shape for a mix of utility and um, a mix of utility and uh, you know self defense. I think like a clip point is probably better for self defense. The um, you know sheep's foot or shark's foot or sheep poon or whatever company you're buying from. Um, is probably the best utility blade shape. Um, and, uh, you know, the uh, drop point is a super compelling uh, all around blade shape. And as per usual, not centered. This is just par for the course for me. Every single bench made that I have, or every bug out, I should say, because I'm sure like the more robust bench maids don't have this issue, but due to the build or whatever it is. Let me see if I can get this focused here. Pretty much every one I've had is slightly off to the clip side. I remember I just watched a video that I did and I said off to the uh, show side, but it's off to the clip side. And I don't know if it's because when you're deploying it, you're pushing against it and it's just kind of a weak overall format. Um, so that affects it so much, but pretty much every single one I've had 
has that issue. So interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, but I'm a big bug out fan. It's, you know, if you've seen my videos, if you've seen my comparisons and my priority score, I use the bug out as a reference point as the best, you know, pocket feel examples or just as pocket feel examples in, in general. So that I give a 10, this I give a nine, this I'd give a nine too. And then like this knife I'd give like an eight because it's heavier, but it's still pretty flat and ergo in the pocket. Um, what would I give a lower score? Some big honking Demco 8020S or something like that in titanium that weighs six ounces plus, that would probably get a, uh, you know, like a six. <laughs> um, not a terrible knife for carry, honestly, because it's so flat, but um, that would not be high on my list. Um, I've, you know, definitely seen some others that would not be high on my list, big Medford or something like that. So anyway, um, that's all for now. Just wanted to get this one into the mix. Super excited to have it on the table. It's one of those ones that I've like, I thought was maybe never going to be re-released and then they re-released it. So I kind of went from feeling like it was uber collector to, okay, this is just another knife. Um, still somewhat limited, still kind of cool, um, exclusive model, but, um, now I'm glad to kind of get it in hand and confirm what I originally thought, which is that this is what the bug out should have been. So, um, that's kind of my two cents on that one. And, uh, yeah, uh, very cool knife. Not good on the value score, but good on the hand score. Feels really good in hand. Feels good on the uh, carry score, of course. The bug out's made for that. It's the best of the best at uh, at EDC from a, a pocket perspective. Pocket clip's good. It's not great. You know, it's just uh, the one thing you just like shocked that they didn't do is bury those uh, or recess those screws, you know, further. But it's fine because the shape here gets pretty tall right above that screw, so you don't really have much issue. But you know. There's not a lot of room there, the way that they built this knife, so it makes sense. So that's it for now. Thanks for stopping by. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.